Hello everyone this is Farhanoor in this video we are going to talk about new variants of covid-19 that is omicron variant we have talked about the covid-19 variants earlier we have talked about the mutations of coronavirus and how they acquire mutations and all these details but if you want to know more about omicron variant and should be concerned about omicron variant so this video is just for you because we are going to discuss about the difference between the earlier deadly or the very dominant delta form of this virus and now the difference between of this delta form of the virus with the omicron form of virus now you can heard all these in news all these omicron is spreading started from the south africa is being spreaded in different countries or different parts of the world now let's look at the features of this let me simple move to the next slide here i am trying to explain what do you mean by this omicron variant or why is it called omicron when the who begin to name emerging variants of the coronavirus they turn to the greek alphabets alpha beta gamma delta and so on to make them easier to describe now the very first thing is that why should we worried about the newly detected omicron variant almost after 2 years of the covid-19 pandemic the world is about to tackle a new coronavirus variant which is believed to be more dangerous than the previous ones the new strain recently named omicron is expected to be even more transmissible than the okay. delta variant in fact it can increase the risk of reinfection compared with other highly transmissible variants meaning that people who have already contracted and recover from covid-19 can catch the virus again but the thing is that should we concern about that but to understand that omicron is a newly found variant and it is found at least 100 individuals affected in south africa apart from south africa there are different places of the world like hong kong uk belgium israel denmark this virus has already been transferred so you don't know where is in india so in our country hopefully it reached it's a normal for this virus to reach there but we should not hope this virus will reach us but there is a high chance that in india this virus also already being moved because at very earlier preliminary stages when it spreads only 2 3 4 5 people very difficult to track it and find data you can only find it only after 14 days till the 14th day we can get to know about more about this virus in india and whether this virus transported to india now moving on what do we know about the omicron variant of covid-19 so far we know that omicron has a multitude of mutations that will likely impact how easily or quickly the virus spreads however there is a lot we don't know we don't know how much more transmissible the virus may be we also don't know if omicron causes worse outcomes such as more severe disease now what we can tell about all this different variants of sars cov 2 we have talked about the differences the mutations the changes they acquire is always in this portion it always in the spike proteins these are known as spike proteins spike proteins are the structure they like lock and key fittest model it interacts with the lock and key fitting model with host means with our body cells host is just like lock and the spike proteins just like a key it connects with the lock or it opens the lock it can go inside our body and it starts showing the symptoms so whenever we are talking about mutations okay all these variants they can carry lot of mutations for example there is virus x and there are two mutations that virus x becomes different variant now the question is why do virus acquire mutations because mutation is random process we cannot control it so there is a environmental changes and all so there is a chance of mutations but among these mutations virus will retain those mutations which are good for them let's see a virus earlier attacks our host like that and now we design or we produce antibodies against this spike antibodies will binds against it and it will kill virus 
so that same receptor are not capable of causing infections in our body so if this virus receives something new let's say some sort of new modifications of spikes like this so now our earlier and older antibodies cannot bind so they cannot destroy the virus anymore so that virus with this new acquired change will become new variant got it so this is the simplest form how the variants formed in the very first place so like this there are different forms there are alpha form beta form delta form and now this omicron form and now i am going to talk about the three different forms separately i am going to talk about the beta form i am going to talk about the delta form and then i am going to talk about omicron form and what are the difference between three is that the major difference is that the beta form earlier and the delta form both are concerned why because you heard about the delta form it was a dominant form dominant means in india many people affected throughout the world many people get affected so this is the dominant form but there is good and bad thing bad thing about delta form is very high transmissibility it is spreads from one person to another person 1 to 10 person at the very beginning the virus spread 1 to 3 persons this delta became 1 to 10 persons infectivity so that was high for delta that was bad about delta but good thing about the delta is that our indian vaccines are working against the delta variant it helps to kill the delta variant so delta variant was not concern for indians at least at that moment so what about the beta variants is that beta variant is not transmissibility like delta but beta variant is dangerous because our vaccines no doubt which is effective against beta variant and the one more thing is the beta variant causes repeated infections means multiple infections for a single person For example we had covid-19 earlier beta variant can cause again covid-19 in the future so that was the bad thing about the beta variant so vaccines are not that much effective against this beta variant okay but now what we are going to say that because beta variant contain two such mutations that make this beta variant dangerous and resistant to the vaccination similarly when we talk about the omicron we found that kind of changes in omicron variant see again mention this omicron variant contains 50 mutations in all total or 50 different changes in this and most of these changes are in spike proteins more than 30 of them are present in the spike proteins particularly there are two mutations p681h and 9679k which are rarely seen together and could make omicron resistant to vaccine and that is a going concern that means all round of had done one and a half year regarding the vaccine production of the vaccine vaccinating people and all of this things will be in vain if this omicron variant resistant to the vaccine we don't know how much vaccination is affecting against this omicron variant that is the most difficult part right now that is the highest concern of us right now okay now if you look at here these are two variants this was a delta variant b.1.617.2 and omicron b.1.1529 these are the two differences you can see the picture here This is a spike proteins and this is also a spike protein region. You can see the red dots. These are the mutations or red hot spots are the mutations. Now you can clearly see that number of mutations much much greater in the omicron than in the delta. There are only few mutations and there are plenty of mutations. 18 amino acid mutations in delta, 43 amino acid mutations are in omicron, okay? And in spike proteins 34 residues Those are there. And earlier in Delta, only eight residues had these mutations. Approximately two to three times the modified amino acids are present in the Omicron variant. The modifications. So, in a simple times, what will happen? 
all this spike proteins that can omicron variant are going to produce there will be something different something new which are our immune system may not recognize first of all second thing our vaccine may not be that much effective third thing it must have higher transmissibility that's for sure omicron is a more transmissibility there is no doubt about it so what is the growing concern right now first thing is that is it more transmissible if the fact is still not understood because it's only a few days the first report of this omicron variant i think on this is 26 november so not much time have passed so research is going on but i can tell you is that yes it must be because otherwise there is no chance that this virus is going to mutate itself obviously is going to stay that means it must be more transmissible from any point of view i can tell you that second thing is that is it more severe in causing disease no not necessarily a virus is acquire more mutations does not mean it will be more severe okay it may be even less severe or it may be similar degree of severity now the third question is can it be detected with pcr yes it facts it can be detected with the rt pcr our next question is can vaccine prevent it or we can say that can you catch covid-19 after vaccination this is a million dollar question right now this is what we should search for everybody should search for can vaccine prevent it we don't know that for search sure because there is a plenty of mutations and we don't know how exactly our vaccine is going to act against it maybe one or two vaccines may work now because there are many vaccines are available right now so we need to check it out and it will take time to come one more question is also arises can people still get covid-19 even after receiving second doses of the vaccines yes no vaccine is 100% protective people can get covid-19 even after vaccination however the vaccination will help protect them from developing severe disease and the final thing is that the what are the chances of reinfection this is one of the going concern that because we know that 50% of the population in india like 100 crore in india is vaccinating one dose 50% will be vaccinating will be very soon with both the doses so 50% of the population which is a huge chunk in india so here is chance of reinfection in india till now what we found is that recently check the report of canadian hospital and hong kong what they found is that most of the people are getting this infection 50% of them are in the hospital and 50% are reinfection so there will be a chance of reinfection because you know most of the people will be vaccinated or they already incurred this virus at some of that point of time in this 2 years for time frame so if this virus need to infect obviously some people will reinfect so there will be a chance of reinfection with this virus there is no doubt about it so these two things i don't have doubt about most of the chance like 90% have chance it will have high transmissibility and there is a high chance that it will cause reinfection but hope we must think positively about the vaccine our vaccine must protect otherwise all in vain so what is required to be right now you should strictly follow the covid-19 protocols and covid norms other thing is that the international travels must be blocked or banned for at least 14 days to find out what's going on in india or how exactly it is spread because it is spreads in india in one state it will spread like rapid fire this is something that we do right now all right So WHO is being conduct meetings to find out the different outcomes of this so that's the news right now about the omicron variant of SARS-CoV-2 so that's all about it if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and please subscribe our channel to get more videos like that thank you bye bye